Greetings viewers and YouTube subscribers. Today I'm going to be discussing the final drive system and methods of gaining improved reliability. Prior to installing the systems that you can see, I had endless problems with chain suck that was coming from elliptical resonance. Part of that resonance was happening at part throttle, which was stemming back to the 10 tooth Chinese output shaft sprocket, um, which was causing tight and slack spots in the chain, which when you're at part throttle, you'd have this increase and decrease in acceleration of the um, primary drive chain, which would then cause the final drive chain to um, chatter and move about. And what would happen at part throttle is you would end up with this resonance, which would cause chain suck. And I had nothing but problems in the early days. I, God knows how many dollars I spent rebuilding wheels because derailleurs were thrown into the rear wheel and, and all sorts of issues and front derailleurs were ripped out. The whole works. So one by one, I, I solved the problem by just continually adding systems and now for the last or should I should say for the last four odd years five odd years I've had absolute perfect reliability so what I'm going to do is take you through the individual systems that I've had to put in place to achieve this reliability that I'm talking about the first thing that you can see that would be obvious is dual rollers or dual idler wheels so I was finding that was what was happening was with the resonance you would end up having slackness in the chain even though the derailleur is supposed to be keeping the chain in tension when you were traveling over bumps or rocky surfaces the chain slap would be that bad that it would cause a complete loose spot in this area here and then that would cause chain suck um, that was such a big problem to try to overcome so initially I started off with one roller and um, that had some degree of, of result but it still didn't solve the problem. So I added a second roller to try to stop the resonance down here moving its way back to the uh, back in the day the 36 tooth final dry sprocket which now you can see is the 40 tooth final dry sprocket. And for the most part that was acceptable but when I started doing some heavy duty off-road work I started having chain suck issues again and part of that was caused by the chain trying to jump over the top of the roller and end up on the opposite side of the flange and it would come up on the top of the flange and then you'd end up with chain suck issues so what I had to do was to build a loop as you can see here this bracket I had to build a captive loop around the roller to stop the chain jumping over the top of the flange. That then solved some problems, but in rare cases what would then happen is the chain would try to break out in between these two idler wheels here. And it would try to come out in between the flange here and the flange of the second idler roller. And it would try and pop out in this direction. So to solve that problem, I took a piece of plastic that you can see here, and I just simply used the blowtorch, heated the plastic up, and formed it to move this piece of plastic um, forward to the point where it was narrower, the gap was narrower than the width of the chain, and that would prevent the chain coming out through this point here, and that solved that problem. Still, there were issues with chain resonance causing the chain to move violently to the laterally across the bike or to the left and right across the bike where the chain would end up hitting the tire lugs and when the, chi the chain would hit the tire lugs the uh, tire would try to lift the chain up then when the chain got to a certain amount of tension the chain would then snap off the tire lug and bounce can cause resonance and you'd end up with chain suck so to solve that problem I'll put this captive device in here as you can see and that's around about one and a half inches of total width and the worst that can happen is the chain can only move one and a half inches in total width laterally and that solved that problem so you can see these systems here on this back face have solved the chain suck issues then I came across another problem where the chain here would try to interfere with the jack shaft chain or the chain coming down from the, the jack shaft onto the 48 tooth sprocket as described in a previous video. 
So what I had to do is put in a separator that you can see here. And you can see the wear where the chain, even though this chain is not touching this aluminium plate, the resonance causes it to touch the aluminium plate. And prior to putting this in, the chain would then try to catch on the side plates of the jack shaft chain and it would tear out side plates and you'd end up ripping a chain in half. So with this device in here, that stopped that. So what we will do now is we'll move around to the other side. Okay. We'll come back a little bit. Forgive the shakes. So the next part of the process was to replicate some of that on the opposite side. So you can see here in yellow, there's a piece of one millimeter plastic and that isolates the final drive chain that you can see there coming out, which then extends over here, final drive back to the rear cassette. It isolates the final drive chain from the jack shaft chain coming down. And these two chains would interfere obviously on the top face as well and you'd end up having side plates being ripped out and the chain being destroyed. So by putting this piece in here has solved that problem. And the same thing on the opposite side um, as what I was describing before you have this aluminium plate that you could see and the aluminium plate actually sits in behind that roller. So it prevents the chain popping out this side because that was the other issue I was having. I was having the chain pop out on this side. So it keeps the chain inside the flange on that roller there. And you can see here the captive loop that I've created to stop the chain popping out on the other side. Then I came across another problem where the chain was trying to escape in between these two idler rollers and it would pop out this side. So I used a hole saw, cut out a piece of plastic from a printer top of all things and simply super glued this piece of plastic, circular piece of plastic onto the idler wheel and that larger diameter that you can see there by the plastic shifts inside this metal plate or the hanger plate and it prevents the chain coming out this side. So you can see it's one by one I've just slowly eliminated problems and this is the opposite face of the captive device to prevent lateral chain movement. What this device also does, which I'm just going to spin things around now for you, I'm going to come down Again, forgive the shakes. I'll try and stop this thing swinging, otherwise you'll end up getting seasick. Okay, what this device also does, apart from allowing the chain some lateral movement as it moves up and down the cassette, is it divides the length of the free chain that's unsuspended into two parts. So coming off this last idler wheel that you can see here, the length of chain between that point and where it enters the lower jockey wheel on the rear derailleur, it divides that length of chain in half. So the amount that the chain can slap around is only around about six to seven inches maximum when the derailleur is at its maximum extension. So that effectively prevents um, chain slap when you're going over bumpy surfaces or, or rocky terrain. Because you're preventing that chain slap, it then prevents any issues further upstream and it completely eliminates chain suck. So one of the big issues that you'll find that if you look down at your chain when you're riding over bumpy surfaces without any of this type of um, system installed, you'll find the chain is just slapping about like mad. 
even though some of the new derailleur systems they have um, friction devices in them to try to prevent that on a motorized bicycle with the higher speeds it's still going to the chain's still going to slap around like mad so by putting this system in place it effectively eliminates chain suck and for the last four years I haven't had any issues whatsoever with chain suck and I've gone down some um, fairly aggressive terrain so my suggestion to you would be to follow this kind of system or try to implement this kind of system if you're using your bike in an off-road application where you absolutely need reliability um, or you're in an environment where you, you simply can't get easy help and, and you need your motorized bicycle to be absolutely reliable um, at least in the drive drive side of things or the final drive so you can't blame that you know chain tuck issues on the on the shift kit it's just part of what goes with the territory of of um, operating a motorized bicycle but uh, i still say that in the part throttle situation where there's light load to next to no load on the final drive system the snapping of the chain or the primary drive chain which runs off the 10 tooth Chinese out output shaft sprocket onto the 17 tooth sprocket that tight and loose and tight and loose situation which is causing vibration feeds its way back down through the secondary drive chain system or the jack shaft chain and then back into the final drive so at part throttle you end up on the top face that the chain is snapping about um, it'd be lovely if sick bike pass could engineer or machine their their own equivalent or version of the 10 tooth Chinese output shaft sprocket or, or a belt drive system because in my opinion that would eliminate all the problems under part throttle but it is the way that it is and we have to deal with it um, so this system that you can see here effectively eliminates all chain suck issues um, I'm sure you could create a simpler system I've just basically used stuff from kits that I've had lying around I mean this piece of of metal here I, I had in bits and pieces and I just gave it to a welder and said look can you bend and form it up and he just basically threw it together what you can't readily see or, or you may be able to just see is that inside the cage I've laid it up with Delrin plastic so the chain on the bottom face here it, it runs on Delrin plastic um, so there's no friction issues so I hope that's been of help if you are having chain suck issues um, because it is a most frustrating thing uh, and Murphy's Law says that it will happen in the worst possible situation so I hope that's been of benefit thanks a lot see you next time